welcome to Yarn Lane. I'm glad you stayed with us. I hope you enjoyed Sewing Street this morning. But if you've just joined us, welcome to Just Like Yarn Lane. We are the only yarn only, so knitting and crochet and other things, yarn TV shopping channel in the UK. The only. So if you love yarn and you love knitting, you love crochet like we all do, then we are very proud to be the only TV channel that brings you all of those lovely things. So not only are we lucky enough to have um, Christine, aka Winnick Mum, on with us this morning, who is the Queen of Socks, but we are also launching Yarn Lane Loves. So I wanted to be able to bring you special products um, sporadically. I would not like to say every show, that's my aim, but um, at least once a week, of things that I love and things that Yarn Lane love as well. So um, we've called it Yarn Lane Loves, and these are just products that you I think you'll love probably because I do too so this is our first one look at this mug is it not gorgeous so it's a whole ball of yarn with a knitting needle let me give it a good nice little 360 for you so obviously you can use this to have your cup of tea while you're knitting your favorite sub sweater crocheting your socks or whatever you happen to be doing or it's a brilliant storage container isn't it put your pens in it Put all your needles in it, put your crochet hooks in it, keep your special things in, all your little stitch markers. Isn't it beautiful though? I love that. I've never seen anything quite like that as a ball of yarn, but I like the fact it has the needle through the handle. But I did wonder whether you'd still be able to get your hand through, but you can. Look, still works perfectly as a cup of tea. So this is our very first Yarn Lane Loves product, the pink yarn mug, only 9 99 It's really lovely, isn't it? I love all the strands of yarn on it. But if you don't like pink, don't worry, we have it in grey as well. Do you want a little 360? There we go, let me go around. Now, um, they all come in a box. This is the grey one. So if you're buying it for someone as a gift, it will come in the box. So you can, easy to wrap up, but it's nice. It's dishwasher tested as well. So if, if you um, if you want to give it to someone as a gift, it does come in a really nice box. Now, if you want to shop on Yarn Lane today, just if you're used to Sewing Street, we work in exactly the same way, except we have a different website. We are www.yarnlane.com, so you need to go on there to order. But we are the same PMP. So if you've already shopped with, your, with Sewing Street this morning, you've done your PMP, so it's free now. You've paid your three ninety five. But if you're only shopping with Yarn Lane, it's whatever. It's three ninety five today for the whole day anything that you buy between now and midnight as long as you remember to check out you can check out 300 times it will still only be 395 between now and midnight to shop with us you go on to www.yarnlane click on watch live all the products that we are talking today all the beautiful kits and needles and yarn lane loves mugs and all the other things are all on there all you have to do is click on add to basket but remember if you don't check out it's not yours Somebody can take it out of your basket, which can happen because we say, oh, well, look, we nearly sold out and then people have got them in their baskets and they haven't checked out. So just do remember that. But other than that, it works exactly the same way. So these are my first ever Yarn Lane Loves. And the pink is still the most popular. Who knew? It's strange, actually. I think the colours have changed this year. I've noticed that grey is increasingly more popular than it has been last year and pink seems to be making a resurgence. It used to just always be blue, but when we, we're selling kits and things on Yarn Lane, grey is really popular, but so is pink. Yeah. Who knew? Mm, just pink. So you can have both of them. What a lovely present for anyone that you know who loves yarn as much as you do. This is the perfect gift. Either a mug or a storage container. It's up to you. We've called them a mug because they have handles. So it's like it's Yarn Lane's version of early bird, but it's better because we've chosen it specially. <laughs> Of course it's better, of course it is. Anyway, we have got Christine with us today. Um, morning, Christine. Morning. Thank you for coming on air with us it's today. Nice to see you again. It's so lovely to have you. So Christine is the Queen of Socks. She has dedicated her life <laughs> to... S well, not, not quite. <laughs> but dedicated so, a lot of her life. I, well, probably, yeah, it is now. Mm. It is now. I think the, you, the, the obsession takes over for longer than you think it does, doesn't it? So, so Well, yes. to teaching people how to make socks so it's not difficult. That, that's what I like to do. Um, and why? Why? Um, I think it's because people have said to me that sock knitting is too hard and because I was able to work it out and, and, and in, in a way that, that 
that showed me that it really wasn't, mm. then I thought, well, that is something that I can show other people to do. I have a background as, uh, in, in, in training, so so it, it was quite it was quite a nice thing to be able to do to combine that those those skills mm. with 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 craft, which is just amazing, and and, and knitting in, in particular. So. And I think socks are one of those things that are easy to have on the go, they're easy to take with you, and, and they're great for um, sort of travel knitting and things. But they're, That's they're, true. but they're really lovely for a family tradition. So, so many people have told me that they're really happy to knit them because their grandma made them, or their auntie made yeah, them, or yeah, their no, mum made them. And, and who able doesn't to want a pair of socks? That, that's what I think. Everybody needs a pair of hand-knit socks. I think there's something. I mean, it's lovely to have a new pair of socks because they stop stretching after a while, especially the supermarket socks, don't they? After about two washes, you can't I get them on your front anymore. I've worn a pair of supermarket socks for about 15 years. No, so I, no, I've, just, I've just not. They, I, after I, about three washes, they don't go on your feet anymore. They stop stretching. Well, I can tell you that some of the socks I knitted a long, long time ago, over 10 years ago, are still going on going my feet. Well, they're, they're we still go. going on my feet now. They're still going. They're still going. And they're not the, seasonal so. either. And the best thing about socks is you can have them in really mad colours. You can. Then it doesn't really matter. You can. I, I know lots of people who have to wear very uh, very plain clothes or dark clothes or very serious clothes mm. for work. But if they're able to wear trousers and boots, then underneath, they, they, they've, they've got, got the, the socks, socks on. Yeah. I know. So we have got a whole selection. So I'm going to quickly run through that um, now and then we'll come back to how to do it. So where should we start? Should we start with your new ones? Go on then. Let's start with the new <laughs> ones. So we have, this is Christine's third time. It is. Third time. I'm on elastic. Can't stay away. I know, no, it's brilliant. It's lovely. And we have so many people who want to see her. So I just have to beg her to come back. So <laughs> she's got two new patterns. We have had her on air before. And we've got some of the patterns back, but with different colours. So let's go to the Magic Diamond Socks. So the picture on the front cover is not the colour that they're in, because obviously we want lots of a different choice for you. So... I mean, Christine will be talking us through the pattern for these and the idea behind, but they have a diamond shape. They on do, them. yes. So the Magic Diamond Shop, shop socks are available in Peacock. I love this colour. Now, this yarn, let me just explain, all the kits are in West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. The reason for that is Christine works very closely with them in developing in her own colours, but they're also extremely good quality yarn. They're all British. Reared, sheared and spun in Britain. They are. I love yes. that saying. They so, are. And this sock yarn has been made specifically for socks. So it's soft, but it's strong as well. It's a mixture. I'm trying to look. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon. So it's wool, so it's lovely and soft. And then the nylon makes it strong. Mm. I do have to tell you, though, it's not just for socks because I get told off. Oh, yes, no, it, it isn't can, sock no, yarn. No, it's four ply yarn, which mm. is perfect for socks, but it's also perfect for, for jumpers and baby clothes and shawls and, and right. cowls. And, and if I just say it's just for, for socks. socks then, then, it isn't. No, we'll get in trouble. It's not just I for get, socks. I get people being cross with me. But today <laughs> it is just for socks. And anyway, what's great is one ball is one pair of socks. So it's really hard because they do fantastic colours and all, all sorts, but I love this peacock colour. It's all shades of turquoises, navies, whites and lime green. It's beautiful and it knits up beautifully as well. You get this lovely multicoloured effect. That, that, yes, they, they come out in stripes. That, that's from the bird range and they, and they come out in, in, in lo lovely they, stripes. So you, they, which is great, isn't it? So you, get, so you end up looking like a striped peacock. You do. Now, the other one that, so that's the magic diamond pattern. The other one I've got is blue tip. Now, a, when we first had Christine on air, I tried to have blue tip and they were out of stock of it for such a long time. They finally got it back, so I thought, now is it? And especially because we we've done we done bird of the month today. So blue tip, I thought, was perfect. So that's a little bit more serious, maybe a bit more masculine if you don't want the yeah. super... You, you, super bright effect. I think what what's lovely is that when you knit these up, you can see the colours in the birds. So if you if you look at a blue right. tit out of the window, then you'll see exactly the same colours in the in the in the yarn. That they're, they're so clever. The and then they, they will come them. out in the stripes. That's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So they are. I mean, that really is peacock colour, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes, I, it is. I, I saw a peacock on a wall when I was driving the other day, and it's it was absolutely that. It was just. And that is the colour of a blue tit. That's right. It's lovely. So, those are the two colours with the magic diamond socks. Right, then the next one is, these are, again, um, Christine's new ones, are the impressive socks. So why are they called impressive? Well, because 
because I think that once you've mastered how to knit a pair of socks, then you're already impressing people because everybody else thinks it's really difficult. Yeah, that's difficult. true. So, yes. so once you once you can add a, a, a bit of a stitch into it as well, and the, the this this particular pattern uses twisted stitches, which is really really easy. I use it on a lot of my patterns, but it makes it makes your knitting look fantastic. So they're called impressive socks because so they, they so, so that because they, they look impressive when you've done them. But I want people to go, wow, no, have you made that? That's impressive. So there we go. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got this in three colours because I was only going to have two colours but then I just couldn't resist this third one. <laughs> this one's called Chocolate Lime and I love chocolate limes and it's just, it's not emerald, it's not lime, it looks like it's got chocolate in it doesn't it? It's it just does. the most it vibrant does. shade of green. And, and it's one of the it's one of the contrast shades that goes with peacock as well so if you've got enough oh. yarn left over you can make a pair of contrast socks with, with oh, different well, coloured cups course. and So heels if you bought both of them, yeah it does actually yep, look and, it, and it works a bright side as well. Well so this there is a are. great one so <laughs> that's it in chocolate lime just to say that they um, they will fit all sizes of feet, won't they? Yes, yes. They're, they're, all, all my patterns are written in four sizes, and if you if you need to uh, change them again, I've got a calculation on my blog for how to how to adjust right. them. So if you've if if your if your feet are uh, wider or narrower than the four sizes that I've given, then there's help to to change it. It's just that if there's if there's a pattern built into it, then it takes a, a bit more thought. But we can we can. Well, right, okay. We, we, can, we can do that. It's, it's fine. It's, it's, you can, so it's possible. So we've also got it in this amazing shade of blue, Blueberry Bomb Bomb. Real, um, it does, it's very, it's very like the blue in the peacock as well, isn't yeah. it? Look at those three yeah, together. They, go, they, go, they go beautifully they together, don't they? don't they? But it is a really sort of, I, it's hard to describe, it's turquoise. But it's not as bright as turquoise. No. Sea blue. No, it is. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Yes, it's may maybe a colour that you'd see in the sea if you're yes. sort of somewhere. It's, it's lovely. It is but lovely. yeah, again, if you want a fun pair of socks, mm. look lovely, you know, I think you're right. I think when, particularly with men wearing suits, it's quite nice to have something a bit fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my husband wears coloured socks on, 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 on the, under his trousers. And then we've also got it in this this one, which is called Black, Black Current Bomb, which is the colour there. And that's gorgeous, isn't it? So that's sort of a fuchsia shade of purple yeah yeah that's that yes I, i'd say so it's sort of, sort of fuchsia a little bit darker i think a bit than, dark than, than, that's than fuchsia. beautiful that goes very nicely with wildflower so that is <laughs> and your sock your impressive sock is knitted in this yes one. yes that's that, that's that one so yes that, that's you can that see what there. it actually looks like that's the one there on screen at the moment on the right okay right then we've got the love spoon socks we're sort of moving up to the easiest one really so we've got the love spoon spoon socks and you, there's a choice of two colours, either Wildflower, which is this one. So this is one of Christine's shades. So she has worked with um, West Yorkshire Spinners, or they've worked with you, one of the two. And we, we work together. They've worked together <laughs> yeah. on selecting the shades. So this is actually oh, no, I chose the, the shades. one it's Sorry. collection. I chose the shades and they helped me with the stripes and putting it together. Oh, okay. They are so actually, actually all my, all my colours. chose the shades mm. herself and then they will then create into the stripes. So this is wildflower and it really is beautiful bright wildflower. Oh, it's, it's, it? it's lovely. They're, they're, they're the colours that I see when I'm out with the dog this, okay. this, this time of the year. There's, out there's with the dog. Out with, out with the dog. <laughs> yeah. the well dog. it doesn't it doesn't doesn't have quite the same ring to it as wildflower. No does it doesn't it? really does it. <laughs> out with the dog in the summer. Um, and we'll be talking through the pattern for this but this is a, another it's beautiful it's got that sort of heart shaped pattern that you would see on a love spoon. So that's wildflower and then we have it in hidden gem which is beautiful tones of purples, amethysts. Yes. Amethyst, lavender, and like ivory. Yes, yes. I mean, that that that, um, that colourway was originally inspired by a, a chevron amethyst, so they're the colours that you'd find in a, in a, in a okay. tumble stone. That's where it came from, and that's where, the, where, the, where my winning mum stripes have come from mm. as well, because we, we looked at the way that that the um, the stone was banded and so, oh, okay. so that's, that's that's how they ended up creating the, those stripes for me so so my stripes are different to the to the to the country bird stripes and the cocktail stripes right they're, they're, they're so you've done it in, yeah so that they band more clearly because the picture on here well you've got one of the socks there you can see how they 
how the bands mm. go up. So that's yes, how that's the fair. stripes on your yarn work. That's that's right. As opposed as opposed to being very 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 definite cut off. Mm. Um, so so many rows per per stripe. These these ones blend into each other a, a little bit more. Okay. And, the, and then the the country birds one. So that's the peacock and the the blue, blue tip, tip are very definite stripes. Right. So, so when okay. you finish one colour, you go into the next mm. one and into the next one. Whereas the, whereas this one, you have a, you have uh, each band goes into the next one and then and then there's a row of it. So, so it, it it's it's a bit more shaded the way uh, that it goes okay. in. But it's lovely to have that sort of striped effect, isn't it? It's great. I love um, stripes. Then finally, we have the boxy rib, which is probably the easiest sock. Uh, yes, prob I would say so. I think boxy rib and magic diamond are both very easy. They're, okay. both, they're both textured ones. A boxy rib, boxy rib is, is easier in that the, the the pattern is just on the front and it's just it's just knit and pearls. Whereas the magic, di yeah, the magic diamond, you you do need to look at a chart a little bit. So yes, I, I would I would go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> but they're Eventually all easy. Gets they're there in all the end. easy. It's just if you want, you know, an easy one. So this boxy rib, this one is in seascape. Now, last the first time we had Christine and I really wanted to do Seascape and we couldn't get it. We were out of stock. So when I saw the West Yorkshire Spinners had it back, I was really pleased because that's the colour of the sock. That's, that's the sock there. Yes. And it is beautiful, isn't it? It really is shades of sort of aqua, turquoise, oh, deep green. It's lovely. It it's is lovely. the sea. Yes, yes. The, this, this, this one was actually uh, childhood holidays in Wales. And the, <laughs> sea, and the sea isn't always that cold. I'm amazed that Wales. childhood yep. holidays in Wales, yep, not the is. Caribbean. <laughs> On a sunny day. No, no, we went to Wales, not the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had a, you had better we, weather. We had some fantastic days, and some right. days I paddled in my wellies because it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is um, childhood holidays in Wales. We can rename all these. Walking with, <laughs> walking with the dog, and then this one is Brightside. Yes, that's that's. Yes. Is that just joy? Joyous rainbow colours. Yes, yes, and and it was all about looking looking on the bright side and and, the, and you know the, what comes up what comes after the dark days and I wanted something that was that was rainbowish and bright yes. but you know without being all, of the obvious. You, you no, know, it's more colours, a muted so. version of a rainbow. Yeah. It's not your so super primary mm. rainbow, is it? No, and I was also looking for something that because not everybody uh, not everybody wants the, the the very bright pink, purple, yellow type no. of rainbow. So. So with this one being a little bit more muted, then that if somebody was all kind of ready to go for it, but didn't didn't really, well, didn't really you know, it's it's a it's a it's a halfway step. Sort of reluctant <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> but it's lovely. I like the shade of green in it as well because it is a little bit more muted, isn't it? Yeah. So, oh, so I love this one. You've just got to decide which one, or which ones. Depending on the colour or the pattern, that's the problem, isn't I know. it? I'm is glad you're not you asking start? me to decide. <laughs> but in the kit, you get so we've gone through all the colours. You get the full pattern written by Christine. Everything that you need to know is in each of the patterns, and the ball of yarn, which is enough to make a pair of socks and a little bit more. Yes, fourteen ninety nine. We've had a message from Marion who says. I use sock yarn to knit for toddler grandchildren. It copes with washing and tumbling by tired mothers. Marion from Shropshire. Excellent. Not just socks. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> copes with washing and tumbling by tired mothers. Well, there we go. So in your kit, you will get the whole ball of yarn and the instructions to make the pair of socks. And there's enough to make... Um, is that, I suppose, is that up to men's sizes as well? I have had a pair of large size 14s out of one ball. Wow. They didn't, they didn't match and, <laughs> and, and but, uh, I needed to use it. You know, if, if you use it, if you've got contrasts, then you'll definitely, definitely have enough. So, so if you, I didn't get matching stripes or I wouldn't have got matching stripes. So I'm slightly obsessed with that. So oh, but they a, but so you can a, still get a bit one of fiddling, pair of but, socks. But, but yes, I got, I got one pair of socks. Up out to size 14. And, and, and it's because it all, it's all based on on foot foot circumference and and, and leg circumference right, okay. so so it, it does I, I can't categorically state that everybody with a pair of size no, 13 feet because but, but, however my daughter's boyfriend who has large curls because he's an american football player and long wide feet we got one pair of one pair of size 14s well, there we go, out then. of that so if somebody's <laughs> if somebody's worrying that they're not going to get their pair of five and a half six or seven mm. then then they, they should you they definitely should, they will should do. do they should do out of one ball Adele has said she's still trying to pluck up the courage to knit a pair of socks. Which one should do she it. start with? Just do, do it. it. <laughs> Which one should she start uh, with? Boxy rib. Boxy rib. Boxy rib. So it's you just have to decide between bright side and seascape. If you're yes. going to do boxy so rib. Whichever, whichever colour. Whichever one you like the most. Choose, choose the colour that, that shouts to you the loudest because that way you're more likely to finish it. 
Yeah, that'd be that one for me. I don't know why, because I love that one. Yeah, well, why aren't you knitting your socks? I don't know. I don't know. Why am I not knitting a pair of socks? <laughs> Yes, because I'm doing something here, but I I am going to knit a pair of socks. I have knitted a pair of socks in the past, Excellent. but found it quite hard. Oh, actually, I didn't mean to say, why aren't you wearing your socks? And it came out of the way. And no, but you won't know, but I have found it quite hard, it. but you've encouraged me so much to do this. And I think it's all to do with the needles. That's what I found. That's what we're going to be talking about mm. as well. I don't like working with DPMs because I get a lot tangled up. But, um, get worried about them. Oh, it's just so anyway, just to, you know, you will love it. Christine has got some, well, so much great instruction here. If you rewatch it, you'll understand how to do it. If you go back to the first show that she did, we'll find out what day it is. I'll have a look. No, yeah, Chris, uh, we'll get Kat to have a look. There's a lot of instruction on that as well. That will really, really help you. And she has the most amazing website and blog that will help you with all sorts of sock related items. I just so want people to knit socks. Hmm? I just want people to knit just socks knit and socks. enjoy them. It's only a ball of wool. If you go wrong, you can undo it and start yeah. again. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's not like fabric when you've cut it and, it, no. and, it's, and it's, gone no. it's gone horribly wrong. 6th of January, that's when it was. Wow. 6th of January. And it's already May. Yeah, so, you know, it's not like fabric. If you cut it out, you know, measure twice, cut once. With knitting, it's not. No, it matter. It, it goes knit wrong. Unpick, knit, on pick. That's right. And, <laughs> and, and you can always use a, use a lifeline where you put, where yes. you put your piece of so cotton. So just give it a go because, then... you know, it is a fantastic for yourself, but a lovely gift as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're a lovely thing to do. And, and I know so many people who knit them for family and friends or, or to give mm. them away. And they're just a really special gift because you're yeah, really thinking right, about the yeah. person that you're giving them to. So which one should we start with? Um, I don't mind. Which well, one? should we ever talk about needles? Because yes. that's should really we, important. Should we do that next? Because I think that's one thing that a lot of people are like, what needles should I use? Do I have to use DPNs? Or some people do like using them. Some people do. Some people do. So so the, the three types of needle that I that I write my tutorials for mm. are DPNs because that's traditionally... Double pointed needles. Yes, double pointed needles. Where's we going DPN? I hate I people who talk. <laughs> what do you mean DPNs? Double pointed, pointed needles. needles. That's right. So they've got a point on each end so that like you can these? so you can slide your stitches off both ends and that's and that's the difference between knitting on the needles with the with with the stop at the end where mm. you where you just go backwards and forwards along the row. So so with a with a sock and, and with my patterns, you're knitting in the round, which means that you're going round and round and round. And, and here's here's the example. This is on a, on a short circular needle, but you're going to just keep going round and round. So there's no seam, there's no there's no gap, there's no stopping. So with double pointed needles, you just slide your stitches from from one from, from one needle to the other. Yes. And you either work with four or you work with five, and that's where some people get just stop. And we've but, got two and a half mil and three mil. Yeah, because it depends, doesn't it? On well, well, I I, can, I cast on on three millimeter needles because um, I, I like I like my um, the start of my cuff to be a little bit more stretchy, right. and the type of cast on that I use is a little bit tight. So if you're ever worried that that your uh, very top edge is, is going to be tight, then I just suggest you just go up a needle size. But all, also um, between usually between sort of two 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 and a half and, and, and three around two and a half. Is it millimeters? Is generally what most people knit on, and that's what will give you the gauge for for, for your socks. Okay. But some people knit tighter, and some people knit looser. So some people always knit on three millimeter, and they get they get a perfect pair of socks. Right. Yeah. No, that makes to, sense because it's, it's to do with the fabric. Tension. Yeah. So if you don't fancy the double pointed needles and and one time that was your choice and that was it. Well, really. it was so, that or nothing. Yeah, so it? if you don't fancy those, then your other choices are a short circular needle. Like Which we one. have. Yeah. Because we bought these especially. <laughs> we don't use these for anybody else. <laughs> these are Christie's needles. Got my, I've got my own stash in, <laughs> yeah. in your warehouse. So. Two and, so, and yeah. a half mil, yep. 25 centimetres. Yes, yes. And that's, that is that is a, a good size for lots of people to start with. Mm. And you can go a little bit bigger, and mine, mine's slightly bigger, and you can go a little bit smaller. Um, that other people like, but they make my hands cramp up. So, so again, by having the range of sizes, then you can find the one that suits you. And 25 centimetres is a really good one to start okay. with. Okay, and so that um, is exactly the one you need. Yep. Yeah, so that, that that's the one, <laughs> and it means you, you can just go round and round on on the one on the one needle. And then the other choice is uh, a, a magic loop or long circular yes. needle, and then you make a loop at either end. Uh, and then and then you 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 knit your stitches so that they're almost like they're flat. So you have a front and a back of the sock. So it doesn't look like a circle like it would with the short mm. circular or DPNs. It, it looks it looks more flat. And then you have the the loop uh, either end. 
Um, and, and some people absolutely love that one as well because you, you're only on one needle. You can do everything that you need to do with that one needle. Whereas with this one, you, you can, but it's fiddly. So, right. and so I, use a, I use a set of double points with this as well because um, and in my tutorials, I, I, I recommend that just because when you start off, it needs to be as easy as it can yeah, be. It does. Otherwise, once you've thrown it against the wall a few times, then you're, <laughs> un you're unlikely to get. Up so, and if then someone's pick it up, a beginner so. to the to not necessarily knitting, but to socks, which one of these would you recommend? Um, well, my my go-to is always is always this one. Okay. I like this one better. So however, the twenty-five yes, centimeter one. However, if you're somebody who rests your needle across across your thumb, like like that, as some people do. Mm then this one isn't going to be great because it, oh, okay. because it gets to... Gets and if to you a, knit with your needles under your armpits, you haven't got a hope. No, you have. There's a trick. Oh, is There's that? a trick. Oh, you, is put, there? you put your needle under the uh, under your arm anyway and then knit with your short circle and your brain thinks that you're doing what you always do. <laughs> That's so really it, funny. it lets you do it. it uh, nine out of ten people, it seems, it works for them and after a while you don't need this needle anymore. You can just get on with it. Well, we've got a circular. couple of guests who always knit with them under their arms and I'm just like... Doing. It's it's yeah it's 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 the part it's of the country brilliant. that you were that you, thing. you were taught. Yes, apparently so. <laughs> and they are both northern as well. No, that the Quite yeah, and, and, and they can be super fast people because yeah. you've anchored your needle so you can get re really quick. But lots of people who knit like that worry that they can't use you use these because they don't put them under their arm. Mm. But the, the trick is to put the needle under there anyway, <laughs> and, and it'll work. <laughs> it tricks your brain. Okay, so where where do we start then? So we've cast on. Yes, so so what what I've oh, I put my specs on and I can see what I'm doing. So so I've actually cast on with this one and uh, and I've I've, I've uh, begun and uh, joined it into into the round. And I normally recommend that you cast on on straight needles or double pointed needles and work a couple of uh, rows first before you join into the round, which which means that the stitches don't twist because in the beginning, right? Once you if when you first cast on. If your stitches start twisting as well, if you're already feeling a bit about starting, and, and you might have you might have all, all your double pointed needles, and they feel like they're going in all the different directions, then to try and stop them twisting as well is is just one thing too far. So, right. so by by working the couple of rows first, it gives you something solid to then join into the round. You using and wildflower there, aren't you? I, mean, I am. I'm using okay. wildflower. Yes, this is a, it's, yeah. The 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 ball the ball the ball was well travelled, so I I ended up re-rolling it. So it yes, yeah. so what it does do is it leaves you a, a little gap, um, but because you've got a tail end, then you're going to sew that up anyway. So when it comes to the end of it, then you you would just sew it up, and nobody will ever know that it's there. Um, so once you're confident, you don't have to do it that way. It's just in the beginnings. I'm all about getting somebody started. Yes, getting so through people thinking like because it's getting started, isn't yes, it? Yes, the biggest problem. That always is the hardest bit. So, so the the other things that I'd, I'd, that I'd mention while that, while I'm here is my stitch marker is quite it's quite uh, it's got a narrow ring, and one of the things um, that people worry sometimes is that they they get a ladder even with the short circular mm. needles. Um, because you can get ladders, uh, they're more likely with double points, and there are, there are uh, tricks to do that with uh, pulling the, the yarn a little bit tighter as you as you've changed needles. And uh, but sometimes if you get if you get starting to get a ladder with a short circular, then check the width of the ring on your or on your stitch marker oh, because okay. if, it, if it's very wide. Um, if you've used a stitch marker that's 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 useful for uh, bigger needles, perhaps, then the the width of that will affect the the, the, the right, stitches, okay. and so and so that's how you can end up with a line there. Um, and then the thing that I get asked quite a lot uh, is is that people will find that their their sock goes inside out, and so they'll get they'll get a certain length of the sock down, and they're like, oh, it's inside out. What am I going to do? And, and so I've left this at, at this point where it's where it's round like this because this is almost almost the the, cru the crucial point right. where, bet between uh, your sock being the right way out or or inside out and, and if it ever does go inside out then don't worry you just put your hand in and pull it the back the pull it the right way out again and if it ever doesn't go the right way out the chances are that you've somehow turned your needles around and gone back the other way. <laughs> so you can always check that because there'll be a little hole. Right, so, so that's, at the point that, at yep, which you turn them around. Yeah, so that's, so that's that one. But but it's to do with how you would hold your needles. And this is this will be the same with whether you're using a short circular or whether you're using double points and probably less so with magic loop. But what happens is that if you hold your needles, so if you imagine that it's a clock and this is, this is 12 o'clock and mm. this is 6 o'clock, if you knit at 12 o'clock here, 
you're much more likely to push your knitting inside and then you end up with it and you're, you're knitting with the with the the tips of your needles away from you whereas if you hold it this way so that the tips of your needles are at six o'clock and they're pointing towards you then the outside of your sock will always point downwards towards your knees and that's how you that's how you keep your sock the right way up and and it, when you start knitting you'll you'll hold them that way but if you if you end up pushing them mm. and, and pushing your needles out to 12 o'clock then that's when it will go inside and that's something that you probably won't come across until you actually until you actually do it because there is there are so many things that it's not until we get started yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that we find that it works or not um, but it's definitely something to keep in mind because that, that I must get asked that question several times a week oh really so, yeah yeah it's really common <laughs> and, and, and the people who've done it it's, it's, it's we're all like this when it when it's new aren't we it's all <gasps> what have I done what have I done? And, and it's really easy. You can you can just pull, you just pull it back out, it backwards. But, but, but keep your keep the points of your needle towards you and not away from you. Okay. Um, and then and then the, the last thing that I, I was going to mention on this is is um, something that I discovered within within the last the last year or so to to be honest because we're always learning, aren't we? I've mm. I've always got got new always. things. Always. Been, I, I do every time I'm on Sewing Street as well, and I think, oh, I never knew that. Yeah, it's great. It, it, it's great. This is this is the lovely thing about either being online and talking to knitters, or if you can get to now we can get back out out to, yes. to, to knit and matter groups Fantastic. and things and you know and, and you we all like to have a nosy of what everybody else are around the mm -hmm. table is doing and um, and so this 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 trick here is to do with keeping the the uh, the, the rib lines uh, re really straight because the the way the way that I knit for whatever reason the first knit stitch used to end up loose and it really used to get on my nerves because the rest of my knitting is fine it's just that this first knit stitch would be a bit baggy and I'd think what why is that? But but what what I do now is is I, I use um, uh, I use a technique where you wrap the yarn the, the other way around the needle to the way that you would do right, normally. Okay. So you have to show me that. So if you were normally if uh, if I was knitting with my um, whole yarn in the right hand, so it's, this yeah. is my, my my English throwing method, I bring the yarn over that way yeah. and make the stitch. Mm. If I take the yarn over that way instead. Right. And make the stitch. Then what happens is I'm actually using less yarn between between the two stitches. Okay. And so it tightens it up. So I only need to do that on the first one. Does the stitch look any different? No. No, it okay. doesn't. It's just tighter. So I don't need to do it with the second one. And then I don't do anything with the first purl stitch. But with the second purl stitch, then... And, and you can see that actually, that because I've, I've started doing this before, so, so normally the stitch is, is mounted so that the, the front leg of the stitch is yeah. towards you. But when you've been doing around with this, then the front leg goes to the back. And you do the same thing. So instead of coming round that way with the yarn, you go You're the opposite way. way. And then that pulls it tighter between the two purl stitches. And then when you go into the knit stitch again, and you can see that the, the legs at the back, because I've been doing this, and go over the top, and then and then it just pull, pulls the, the two in together and then you can you can make the the next knit and purl the same way and then you come up from the back wind the yarn the other way around and then the same that way and then what happens is that when you pull it everything everything tightens up and so what was what was a bad <coughs> first stitch is is, ju is just tighter wow. now and it might be that you need to experiment a little bit some people find that, that it works better if they do it with the first and the second stitch or, or with the okay or, 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 but it's but definitely doing doing that on the rib so it, may, yeah. so it certainly makes a big difference for me and it makes that makes the the rib of your sock look much no much that's neater. really interesting because especially you say it doesn't look any different you just i don't know why but i sort of expect it to look different because yeah. you're wrapping it around the other way no it, it would look different if you knitted into the back of the stitch because that would twist the right. stitch completely so so um and then that's how you would end up with a twisted rib mm. but this just this just gives you the, the the same rib that you would be doing normally it's just that because you've wrapped the, the yarn the other yeah. way then there's slightly yes no, slightly less yarn, okay. but, which makes a tighter stitch, but but it still looks exactly the same. Fab, that's really good, isn't it? it it's, I like it's, that. It's, it's, I was I was very very pleased to discover <laughs> that one. We've had a message from Karen who says, 
From seeing you on your first show, I am now on my 14th pair. Come for that. 14th <laughs> pair. It's very difficult. Karen, that was only in January. <laughs> that is amazing. 14th pair. That is very impressive. And, yeah. There's like one a week. I know. There should be a disclaimer with socks, really. It's quite addictive. <laughs> <laughs> I forget and a to message tell people. from Trisha who says, Hello all, I've just ordered the bright side boxy kit and circular needle. First time for making socks. Good demonstration, Trisha. Yes. Oh, thanks, Trisha. Yay! <laughs> oh, good luck. Well, these short circular are really popular, aren't they? That, they're, they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. They, and they, they just, they, you, you can get some speed up with, with these <laughs> things. Speed up. I like to try and get sparks going with mine. <laughs> Well, and we did get them specially. These are the ones, this is the magic loop. That's what I want to know how to do because um, I think that's harder, the, the working it, with the longer ones. Um, it, it's quite straightforward when, when you get to it. I didn't, I didn't bring that needle with me today no, no, because, I, because I, I will bring it again mm. an, an, another day. But it is, it is quite straightforward when you, when, when you see how to do it. I think sometimes we, we put ourselves off by, by looking at the loops and thinking, well, how the heck does that work then? But actually, because you're only, you're only working on the stitches in yeah. front of you. So if you concentrate on those and, and, the, and then the, the process of, of turning it round and pulling the loop through is quite easy. Yeah, I think it's just something you need to practice. So tell me about the other socks then. Right. Your inspiration, that's what I'm interested in. Let's, should we talk about Magic Diamond? Yes, that's that's this one. Well, this this is called Magic Diamond, not because there are any extra rabbits that are going to pop out of it. Or, and these or are the like these are our birds, so these are in blue tit or peacock. Yeah, they're going to look lovely in, the, in those in those mm. colours. So, so, which so this, one? Which yeah. one? What's your favourite? Maybe you have to go with the one that shouts. You always have to go for the one that shouts. Mm. That's that. That's that's the trick with everything. Whenever you whenever you start a new one, the one that shouts because you're most likely to finish it. Oh right, I don't know. So, yeah. so this one is blue tip, and this one is peacock. So same pattern, but you just have to decide between blue tip and peacock, or both, or both, or just have both. You can't decide. <laughs> Brand new pattern to sewing called Tony Yarn Lane. I'm on so I'm not only on the wrong <laughs> channel, let alone three back. <laughs> Brand new to your play today. Oh, oh dear. goodness. So <laughs> I need to throw a bit of magic over to you for yeah, the could you, could you? I I know, my brain's just fried. So um, brand new to your name today, the Magic Diamond Socks. Yes, and so. they're called Magic Diamond Socks because <laughs> ha, she hoiks them off here. <laughs> because they've got they've got diamonds on them and they go from, from the, the cuff all the way down to the toes on the front and then all the way down to the heel on the back. But if you don't want those diamonds and now you see them, now you don't. So you can do the diamonds. You need to lie it flat because like. the camera's How's overhead that? you. How's that? Is that better? Oh yeah. That way there. So oh, if you get really close, now you can see the diamonds all the way front. Yeah, so they go they go from here all the way to the toes, yes. and you can stop at the toes and do plain toes. You can stop at at the end of the leg and do a plain foot. You don't have to continue it to the back. So so that that's that's where the magic part came right, from. Right. Okay. We're all sock magicians when we've exactly. got our needles in our hands. You see. So so that so, and it's and it's a texture pattern. So it's it's knit apart from um, a a. a, a um, uh, pearl stitches, which creates mm. the diamond, and that's worked with a chart or with written instructions, depending. Okay, on Okay, does it come with both? Use. Yep. If um, somebody hasn't used a chart before and it all seems a bit daunting, then there is information on my blog on how to, on how to read charts. That's in my cable socks pattern, but that's um, it, it's really useful to be able to do both. And so, what I would say is that if you are, in fact, without even needing to go to the blog. If you start with the written instructions, and as you read each stitch, then have a look and match it with what's on the chart. Yes. And then because they're both, they're both the same, then that will get you into reading the charts. And once you can do that, it opens up so many doors because it, it's just faster to be able to do, especially if it's a really long pattern, if you're doing a jumper or something and it's got, you know, sort of 80 stitches and they're all written out. And yeah, they're all like if, you, if you can just, read, two, just, just read a chart, it's yeah. just easier. So this is a, this is a good introduction to, to getting getting into chart oh, okay reading but one. you know but that's it's nice isn't it that you've got written instructions pattern pattern so you just go through hmm. you just go through them yes yeah so 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 nobody needs to be put off and so you, they can use it whether they like charts or, or not hmm. so that's that's that one we've got a question from Lisa good afternoon ladies I'm knitting my first pair of socks and I'm stuck with the turning of the heel can you show me 
Not right at the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you um, the turning of the heel. Right. Well, I can show you that the, that the heel, that the turning of the heel is here. And so if you've made your heel flap, then you'll have, had a, you'll, you'll have a square section on your needles. And then what we what we do is you start here on the, the heel turn and you 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 work you work this V-shaped section here. So I haven't got anything on the needles to show you today, but we can we can sort of talk through the process of it. So so um, what you do is you you do a decrease at each each end as you go along, and then that pulls the stitches in so that so it becomes the the V shape. Um, there is if you follow the pattern as mm -hmm. it's written, then it works. I think that's okay. that's probably the 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 easiest thing to say is that it it does seem like some kind of magic, and it is because it is. But you have developed these patterns yeah. by talking to lots of people and what problems they have, and then trying to solve it from there. Well, I, yes. I, what I what I've what I've done is I've used I've used the basic pattern that I've always used, and then and then um, whenever somebody's got stuck on something, then that's why my patterns are very wordy because yeah. I know there are certain. So there are you certain know points where, where people get stuck. Yes, that's and have right. So from that perspective. Yes, that that that's right. So so when it comes to when it comes to the heel turn, then there's quite a lot of information about how it works as opposed to just the the few lines that you might find yes. in, a, in, in another pattern um, w w w because because a heel turns a heel turn so once you can do it once then you'll be able to do it pretty much on, on any sock so I'd say so. Linda what you need is one of um, Christine's kits to be fair <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll know because it tells you exactly how to do it in here it does mm. so there you go you just need one of Christine's patterns because you've just got to choose which one you, okay. You've got, how, how do you choose? You've got so many there. The I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm struggling with. I mean, I like the idea of having the different textures. I love that one because it's got the diamonds on mm. it. Um, which one should we talk about next? The impressive. Yes. So the impressive is is good because um, because it's a plain colour. The pattern really shows up, doesn't it? It, it does. It, it does, and it's and it's it's really simple as well. It, it's it's just lines of. Of twisted stitches that that go in in diagonals, um, and then the the rest of it is knitted. They 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 go in opposite directions mm. on on the foot so that they they run into each other. But they they look like they're really complicated and and they're not. They're they're, they're really not. So if you've had a go at a a basic sock and you're ready to move on to something and you feel confident then you you will be able to do this because all, all of my patterns are written for adventurous beginners okay so, so you know if you could if uh, i just i think we should all be fearless and is that so, an adventurous beginner to socks or to knitting um well both both really because if you can knit and purl and cast on then you can knit a pair of socks okay so all right there we go then. so 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 yeah so even if you started with if, with boxy rib um which is is, is very simple mm. then then yeah you, you could do that but you know some some people are a bit like i'm really gonna go for it and they, they would launch straight in with the straight no, in with yeah the i would as well so. i think right okay i can i can knit i can purl i can yeah. cast on yeah you can knit socks so black borrow Come bomb and chocolate lime on neck and neck. Oh, they're, they're good colours. They're good colours. Yeah, this is black currant bomb. There we go. Chocolate lime is this one. I love this one because I love chocolate limes. And that's only one behind. It's not that no one likes it. That's like, you know, buy one of each. That's your Christmas presents, isn't it? You might have had in a pair Do you know, of those. chocolate lime is really popular at Christmas because of the way that it goes with... Which lot, one? The, the chocolate lime. Oh, OK. It's it really popular at Christmas because you, usually it goes with the uh, the West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colours. Oh, does they it? <laughs> so they go, they go through loads, they make loads of, of that one Oh, Christmas. really? Yep. Yes, cream socks with your Christmas suit. Mm. Which is the most popular, po most popular sock of the day? Is boxy rib in seascape. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow, it's such a so. Such what a do we do? Color. So the difference with the impressive socks, then you do your normal rib, but then yes. you start moving into a pattern. Yes, that that's that's right. So, so um, the instructions the instructions tell you ex exactly what what, right. what what to do, and and the the pattern is repeated on the front and the back. So, so you you follow the instructions to get to half of the sock and then you follow them again to get to the other half okay. of the sock so if you felt that it was too much and you wanted the back plane 
then you, you could do that. That would be that would be absolutely fine. But um, but it's it's really it's really it's not hard. It's really not hard. And these these twisted stitches are really popular with in, in sock knitting mm. patterns anyway. So if you can, they're just the the all of the all of the stitches that are within a sock are generally just the same stitches that were there before. They're just in a different order. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, like so, you say, it's knit and so, pearl, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 these twisted stitches are only two stitches, and instead of them being together like this, you turn them that way. Mm. So you would knit one and then the other, oh, and okay. it turns a stitch over. It's it's it, it, it's really easy, but you, you know when you can create patterns that, that go down like this and start to look a bit like ropes, and that that's you know that's when you start to look great, and, and it makes you feel great. Because I, I always say once you can knit socks, you can do anything. Yeah. And, and, so and what, I, where do most people struggle with socks then? What do most um, people have problems with, or what do they think is going to be? Difficult? They think it's going to be the heel. I always okay. get told told about the dreaded heel, right. and, it, and it's and and I think it's because you've been going in one direction. And then you turn around and you're going in another direction. So it looks like you've got to do something super complicated to turn that 45 mm. degree angle. Whereas in actual fact, what happens is is you you only work on half the sock, and that's and and then so you carry on going down, and 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 then you're going along in in so it's only the same thing. You were going along that way, and then that half the sock turns it, and then you're going along okay. along that way. It's it's really it's really not as complicated as mm. you think, and because. Because of the way that I've written the, the instructions, um, what, what some people like to do is read ahead and, and think, oh, well, that's, oh, I, I don't get it. But, but actually, when, when you do it and it's in your hands and you're at that point, then if you follow what I've written, right. then, then, it, then it works. So, so you know, I, I just have to say, so trust me, trust me, it, it works. So trust me, I'm a sock knitter. <laughs> oh, we've got a message from Elizabeth who says... I bought the carousel sock kit and had trouble with the heels, so I bought the Winnick Mum book and found the heel and toe instructions brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Well, there we Thank go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think we, I don't know whether we've got the books. We did, we have had some, we, yes, we have had them, whether they still, but we had so many um, patterns today. I thought, well, I can't put the books on. No, we'll I get, know. We'll get confused, too much. won't we? But that, that's great. Um, what about the, so is, I was going to say, so is your instructions more about do not read all the instructions before you start? Because you know, normally people say read all instructions yeah, before you begin. It's, it's, it's well, well, it's, it's these, these patterns are, I am more constrained for space than I am, than I am in the book. So in the book, I've got, I've, I'll have sections where I'll go read all of this bit first. And then there's a section right, whereas with, okay. with that, with that one. What I've tried to do is write it as clearly as I can, but then still get it all on on four sides of, of A4, as opposed to 108 pages, mm. which is which is, is 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 what's in the book. So, so I um, I've uh, I've got a style of, of writing now. I work I work with a tech editor, and she she helps me, and she she absolutely gets the way that I write and, ha and how I try to be wordy without without being too yeah, wordy just, being just, yeah just just to make sure that everybody mm. uh, even if even if they're um, quite new to sock knitting isn't going to feel ov overwhelmed by it so so the in the information that's in there for the heel is exactly the same as the information that you that you'd find in the book there's there's just not all the extra bits with me go now look at this or turn this round or, or, or do yes, yeah, that you, what you've mean. got you've got the but you've got the bones of it and so you've you got see, everything you yeah, need in yeah there, then. you don't yeah the, there's nothing missing in in there mm. that would just that you know that assumes that you've got to go and find another book somewhere else to right to, to do it if you if you follow the instructions then you you should have a pair of socks okay um love spoon talk to me about love spoon oh. yeah why is it called love spoon it's because <laughs> It's because that this this pattern here that goes down the front reminded me of a Welsh love spoon. Because it's um, hearts. It, it, it is, isn't it? It looks like hearts. It's it's just it's the way that the the, the cable works. But yes, it, it looks like hearts yeah, that go really, in the, yes, yeah that go it, into that go into circles and and uh, um, and it's the same. It, it's 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 the, the same section that's repeated all, all all the way down. So once you've mastered the section, then you just you you just keep going. Um, and again, it's on the front and it's and, it, and it's on the back. Um, but yeah, that's why it's called Love Spoon. It's because it was because I was thinking of the the, the Welsh carvings. I, I just love them and and, and the, yes. the ones that you could, that you look at in the shops and and they've all got the you know they've got the different motifs on and they all mean something different. And mm. oh, I just think that's that that's just lovely. So so I liked this one because it looked like the hearts and and that's that's where that name came from. Yeah, it is lovely, isn't it? 
Oh yeah, no, if I picked up the wrong, no, I have got the right one for Love Spoon. Yeah, sorry. Wildflower's the most popular. I think wildflower generally is popular, mm. and especially at this time of year because we're, we're surrounded by the greenery exactly, and the, isn't it? You know, and and the, the 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 pink that's that's in there it, that could be uh, the the, um, the campion, the ragged robin that was out recently, but it's also the same colour as our lilac tree, which has just come out now. But oh, but you know, yes. a, a few weeks ago yeah. that wasn't there, and and then the blue w w it was the sky, or it's the bluebells, or it's chicory. You know, it, there, yes, it, it doesn't matter where you are, you will see those you colours see when, those when colours. you're when, when, out when you're out in the hedgerows. And they will come out in the same stripes as... Yes, in the same the same stripes as, as, oh, the, yeah, so as these ones. Oh, yes, that's working on. Yeah, that's right. So you can you can see how it's starting to, 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 to come out here. Um, and it's... Yeah, that's... Well, hi, hide my scruffy ball. <laughs> <laughs> message from Anne-Maria. Hello, making my first pair of socks boxy rib for my dad because he can't wear shop ones. He cuts them at the cuff. <laughs> Oh, I have got a trick for that one. So it, it, I'm assuming that he cuts them at the cuff uh, because for shop ones. Yes, they're too be because, tight. Because they're too tight. So if you if you're finding that he's going to say the same thing about your socks, then the trick is when you cast on, work four rounds of knit first and then go into your rib, and that will give you a rolled edge at the top, and it's not tight to pull on at all. Uh, or okay. or you could go up several needle sizes which gives you a really just to get slack. that yeah, real yeah. if you didn't yeah if you didn't want the real uh, uh, didn't want the rolled edge then then go up and, and make sure that you've you've really got that loose so that when he pulls it he's not uh, going to um, find any resistance from the yarn because uh, my, my my uncle doesn't like tight socks at the ankle so that's why I, that's why I no no I did no did, did, did the roll did, did the roll rib for him so it's only a very slight rolled rib because it, it, you know, it doesn't come over you don't you know you don't look like right. a, like an elf or anything like that <laughs> yeah. it's only a very so four rows of knit I do four rows of knit yeah and then and then I do uh, 12 rows of rib and then that that gives me the 16 oh, rows okay. that I use for, that I use for my cuff you can make them longer if you want to but but you you have to put some rib in there otherwise it falls down. Right, yes, because it wouldn't be any good. So yeah. we've got a message from um, Elaine. Check out Christine's own website where all the best basic instructions are laid out and explained really well. I'm now on my 39th pair. Over four years, many are plain socks, but the gorgeous wool makes beautiful patterns. Trust the pattern hey, from Elaine. Thank oh, you. well, thank you. Um, what I want to know is if you want to knit a pair of socks for someone as a gift, yes. how do you know what size to do with them? Because well, You've talked about ball circumferences. Yes, there's there's a, there's a couple there's, there's a couple of things that you can do. Is is p some people um, if if it's a, if it's an absolute surprise, then yes. that's that's more difficult because <laughs> you've 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 either got to try and find out by stealth, <laughs> which <laughs> measure them while they're asleep, or get someone else to measure them. Or, oh, I've just been doing this with my foot. What's yours like? You know, you know, you you might. <laughs> <laughs> we are oh, we've. we've We've had all these conversations, so mm. you've either got to try and do it by stealth, or um, or you've got to guess. So if you think they're about the same size as you, and, and, and in ter but because in terms of width, because shoe the actual shoe size is easy, but in, it's because it's the width. Yes, yeah, the, the width, isn't the, it? That's Have the you got issue. Fat feet? Yeah. <laughs> well, you wouldn't say that no. to somebody. No, so <laughs> but look at them going. Mm. Because they've got thin feet. Oh no, it's 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 really hard. It's really it's you know especially if you only ever see them with your shoes on, it's really yeah. hard to work out what some some person's feet work, might might be like. But but actually, what what people are surprised that is that if you were to say to somebody, I'd really like to knit you a pair of socks, <laughs> but I want to measure them to get them perfect for your feet, they'll be like, oh, and they think it's fantastic. Yeah, so you just said so they can't be a complete surprise. It becomes a proper bespoke. Oh, yes. I am doing these just for you. It's and, like a tailored suit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, tailored yeah, yeah. And that makes them super special, you know. You know, and and, and so, so so some people think, oh, I can't tell them, I can't tell them. But if they know they're coming and they know they've been measured and they know they're going to yeah, fit, yeah, that's true. You know, actually, it's 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 amazing. So so it is harder if you absolutely don't know and you do have you do have to guess. So I would always mm. guess probably slightly bigger based on the fact that their foot might be right. slightly bigger than you think or they might not wash them as carefully as you do and they might, they might end up shrinking yes, a little that's bit. True. Well, um, I think um, oh, this is my Christmas sorted. I'm going <laughs> to start because you know, everyone wants a pair of socks, don't they? They do. But they're mine, I'm having the first pair though. Yeah, well, I always say to people, knit the first pair for you, because yeah. then, you, then you try them on. I think that I'm going to have them in this colour. I think peacock is... I want you wearing those next yeah, time no, I I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now. Yes, that's why I'll have a pair of those. It's like my own shop, isn't it? Well, thank you so much, Christine, for coming back on air. Um, 
we've got you. We've got you back on in another uh, six weeks. It's before. something like that. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. No, that would be great. Thank you. With some new things. So let me just quickly run through. We've got a lot of choice for you, and I know it's really, really confusing. Even I'm confused. The most popular is boxy rib, and um, boxy rib is available in. Obviously, the kit has the instructions and the yarn, but there's a choice of two: seascape, which is this beautiful colour of Welsh holiday sea. <laughs> <laughs> I had some lovely holidays. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, and it was a lovely weather when Christine was there. Was. And we also have it in bright side, which is this sort of subtle rainbow. Let's go for that. Brilliant for beginners. I mean, they're all fine beginners. As long as you can knit and purl and cast on, that's, right, that's yeah. all we need to yeah, do. Yeah, just I'll depends. Yep, yeah, you can do our, any of these. So that's boxy rib. The next one is love spoon, which is the one with the lovely hearts down the front. Um, Hidden Gem, which is this lovely shades of purple and amethyst. It's based on the sort of the cut facets of amethyst, as you can see. And then the other colour is Wildflower, which is beautiful. That's the colour that Christine had on her needles. I mean, it's just beautiful. And one ball is enough to pay a pair of socks for almost everybody. Pretty much the biggest, longest, fattest feet around. Um, then we have Impressive. And impressive is in blueberry bonbon, blackcurrant bomb, and chocolate lime, which is gorgeous, isn't it? All of that, click on watch live, and all the details is below that because I know we've only got 30 seconds left. Finally, brand new today is the magic diamond socks in blue tit and in peacock. How are you going to choose? I don't know, but start please do share your pictures if you click on um, w.yarnlane.com click on watch live and scroll down below there you will see all the different socks in all the colorways with all the patterns so you can make your choice which might be a bit easier any questions that you've got put them on the yarn lane fan page um loads of people will help you including christine so if there's anything you want to know or you're not sure but thank you for joining me today yarn lane is back on wednesday with carrie garden who's going to be doing aaron knits with wool couture so thank you for joining me today and goodbye <laughs>